On this episode, I am briefly looking at crimes against humanity. What is it? Where did it come from? And who committed it? The definition of genocide is the deliberate killing or destruction of people who belong to a particular racial, political or cultural group. So the term crimes against humanity was first used by an American Civil War soldier who was also a politician and a writer. He was called George Washington Williams. He used the term crimes against humanity when he sent an open letter to King Leopold II to describe his practices that he witnessed when visiting the Congo. A list of crimes against humanity can consist of murder, extermination, enslavement, deportation, torture, sexual violence including rape, prostitution, forced pregnancy or sterilization, persecution based on politics, race, nationality, ethnicity, culture, religion or gender. Enforced disappearance, whether that be government-authorised abduction or imprisonment. And apartheid and other inhumane acts of violence that is intentionally meant to cause mental or physical suffering or injury to the victim. George Washington Williams was the first African American to graduate, which was at Newton Theological Institution. He then became a pastor at the 12th Baptist Church in Boston, an editor for the Commoner in Washington, D.C., and a pastor of the Union Baptist Church in Cincinnati. Subsequently, he also became the first African American to serve in the stage legislature and had a keen interest in public affairs. He had wrote extensive volumes on Negro history called History of the Negro Race in America, from 1619 to 1880, Volume 1 and 2, Negroes as Slaves, as Soldiers and as Citizens of the Unity of the Human Family, a historical account of the Negro governments of Sierra Leone and Liberia. He also wrote The Negro as a Political Problem, which was published in 1884. A few years later, on 14th of October, 1890, George Washington Williams wrote an open letter to the then King of Belgians. He wrote of his shock at the brutality the Congo citizens received under King Leopold's rule. King Leopold II was the successor from 1865 to 1909 from his father, King Leopold I, after he died. Through King Leopold II's own force, he became the absolute ruler of the Congo Free State from 1885 to 1908. King Leopold II's eldest daughter, Princess Louise Marie Amélie, was from Queen Marie Henriette of Belgium. Princess Louise was a member of the House of Wettin, which is branched from the family tree of the saxe coburg Gotha as she married her cousin, Prince Philip of saxe coburg gotha which allowed her to retain her birth title, the Princess of saxe coburg gotha and the Duchess of Saxony. It was King Leopold I, who was the uncle to Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, who promoted their marriage, even though they were first cousins. Surprisingly, it was Queen Victoria who proposed to Prince Albert. So this makes the current Queen Elizabeth II relation to King Leopold. A letter from King Leopold II of Belgium to all government agents in the Congo on June 16, 1897. The task which the Belgian agents have to accomplish in the Congo is noble. It is incumbent upon them to carry on the work of civilization in Africa. The aim 
is to regenerate races whose degradation and misfortune is hard to realize. The fearful scourges in the eyes of our humanity, these races are the victim. This is already lessening, little by little, through our intervention. Each step forward by our people should mark an improvement in the condition of the natives. In those vast regions of land, mostly uncultivated and mainly unproductive, where the natives hardly knew how to get their own daily food, European experience, knowledge, resources, and enterprise have brought to light unimaginable wealth. Exploration of virgin lands goes on, communications are established, highways are opened, and legitimate trade and industry are established. So even though he had wrote that to the people of the Congo, there was an excerpt from a private letter written by King Leopold II to a group of Belgian missionaries who were about to leave for the Congo in 1883. The excerpt says, Reverends, fathers, and dear compatriots, the task that is given to you is very difficult. You will go certainly to evangelize, but your priority must be Belgium interests. Your principal mission in the Congo is never to teach the savages to know God. This they know already. They speak and submit to a Mungu, one Nzambi, one Nzakomba, and what else I don't know. Your essential role is to facilitate the task of administrators and industrialists, which means you will go to interpret the gospel in the way it will be the best to protect our interests in that part of the world. Your knowledge of gospel will allow you to find text encouraging your followers to love poverty. Like, happier are the poor because they will inherit heaven, and it's very difficult for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. You have to make them abandon everything which gives them the courage to affront us. Evangelize the savages so that they stay forever in submission to the white colonialists, so they never revolt against the restraints they are undergoing. Recite every day. Happy are those who are weeping because the kingdom of God is for them. Convert the blacks, always by using the whip. 